Hey there parents and teens, this is Claire from The Study Gurus. If you're wondering about the random makeup with activewear look, Yes, I had to go to work this morning for a bit, so I had to chuck on makeup, and it's really hot in Auckland today, and I'm playing tennis soon, so I thought you wouldn't mind the makeup active wear combination. Anyway, let's get stuck in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about five awesome exam day tips. So these are things that I want you or your team to do in the actual exam. A lot of teens go wrong when they overlook the importance of having an actual in-exam strategy. Yes, the majority of the hard work needs to happen before an exam, but in the exam itself, it's really important that your team goes about sitting the exam in a really smart way so that they maximize all of that really hard study that they've done leading up to that point. So these were five things that we always tried to do in every exam to make sure we were getting the most out of all of our study and getting the best exam grade possible. Tip number one is to plan your exam time in advance. This involves making what we call an exam timetable. An exam timetable is a breakdown of how you're going to spend your time in the exam. So while an exam study timetable, which is another timetable we talk about a lot, is to plan out your study time leading up to an exam, an exam timetable is how you're gonna use your time in the actual exam. And this is super, super important because exams are all about being under the pump. So it's crucial that you use your time as efficiently as possible. So the way to make an exam timetable before an exam is to have an understanding of how many questions the exam is going to throw at you. So for instance, if you know you're gonna to have to write three essays in three hours, and all of those essays are worth the same amount of marks, then you should be spending about one hour on each essay. If you have 100 minutes to answer a multi-choice exam that has 100 questions, well then you know that going into the exam, you should be spending about one minute per question. So either you'll know exactly how many questions you have to answer in the exam, and then it's pretty easy to figure out how much time you should be spending on each answer, or you don't quite know exactly how many questions you're gonna get asked, but you should still have a pretty good idea of the exam format, what type of questions are gonna be there, are they gonna be essays, are they gonna be short answer? So you should still be able to have a rough idea of a time plan before you go into the exam. Now the trick is, and I was always quite terrible at this, is to stick to this exam timetable when you're in the exam. One of the worst things that can happen in an exam is that you run out of time because you can't get any marks for answers that you don't put down on the page. If you find yourself rushing in an exam, it's better just to get something down on the page, a bullet point, a legible scribble, anything that shows the examiner that you know the answer, even if it's not the best answer that you could have given, that's much better than leaving it blank because they can't give you any marks at all for a blank answer. So the takeaway message here is go into your exam with a plan of how you're going to spend your time and do the best that you can to try and stick to that timetable in the exam. Tip number two is once you're in the exam and the timer starts, take a moment, just 30 seconds or so, to read through your exam paper from start to finish. We always used to sit down and flick through the exam paper, just giving each question a little look over to familiar to familiarize ourselves with the exam, to make sure you know how many questions, how long it's gonna be, what type of questions are being thrown at you, that sort of thing. And the reason we did this is because it means that you're instantly more prepared for what's to come. The situation you wanna avoid is just answering a, an exam paper from start to finish without knowing what's coming and then having nasty surprises and not enough time to deal with them down the track. So for instance, if you can see that at the back of the exam, there's a big exam question that you're gonna to need to spend quite a bit of time on, then you'll know that you're gonna to have to leave enough time to answer that question. Okay, so just a quick flick through of the exam paper so that you know what's ahead, so you can plan your time in the exam as you go. Tip number three is to answer the easy exam questions first. So once again, we tended to not answer an exam just from start to finish, because what we often found is that, especially when you first start an exam, your brain isn't quite warmed up and you might get tripped up by some of the harder questions. So what we would tend to do is to go through the exam, finding the questions that we knew how to answer quite easily and answer those first. 
Now what this did is it kind of got our brain warmed up for the harder questions. So by the time we would got through the easy ones, we could come back to the harder ones and honestly it worked. You'd find that you suddenly knew answers to things that you didn't when you initially looked at the question and you just, you're in exam mode by that point. So you are more able to get stuck into a harder question and give a more substantive and full answer. Then when you first sit down in an exam, it's kind of like a bit overwhelming and and you're not in the groove of it yet it's this is the perfect analogy to this is like going for a huge run without warming up this isn't always possible depending on the exam format but generally speaking we would try to utilize this technique of answering easier questions first because I don't know how it works but I promise you if you come back to harder questions later in the exam when your brain is warmed up they should be easier to answer tip number four is Read the exam question. I know this might sound dumb, but it's so important. And unfortunately, teens, you know, lose so many marks just by not reading an exam question properly. So firstly, this relates to kind of your brain not being warmed up and the exam pressure and all of that when you're in an exam and you can just misread what could be a perhaps a pretty simple exam question and just read it totally wrong. And your exam and the examiner can't give you marks for answering the wrong question, even if it was a great answer. So reading the exam question a couple of times to make sure that you've really understood it is absolutely crucial because you can only get marks for the questions that you actually answer. This is also really important for harder questions that have more than one part to it. Exams love to do this for essay questions and big discussion questions where there'll be like an explain and then a discuss and a make sure you compare all in the same question. So it's really important that before you dive into an answer that you really understand the question so you can answer the whole thing. I was reminded of this very important thing at work this week, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video. We were doing a newspaper quiz online at work and one of the questions was, what is uh, one half divided by one half? And way too quickly, I was like, that's ridiculous. It's obviously a one quarter. And I was feeling all sort of um, pompous because I used to tutor maths. And of course, I didn't read the, the question properly at all because one half divided by one half is actually one. So yeah, a maths tutor not reading a very simple maths question wrong was a bit embarrassing. So it's a good reminder for all of us that you absolutely have to read your exam questions properly. So last but not least, tip number five, try and leave time at the end of your exam, just two to five minutes to read over your exam answers because I guarantee you, you will find silly mistakes that you can fix and in doing so you can pick up some really precious extra marks. So when I was studying, I used to always try and leave even just a few minutes at the end of the exam to quickly read through my answers because inevitably little silly mistakes would pop out at me and I'd be able to quickly cross them out and fix it. This could have been things like putting the wrong units in a maths answer or writing out a quote incorrectly in an essay or solving a calculation improperly for chemistry or whatever and just making a silly mistake. And all of that costs precious marks and you've done all the hard work, now you just are putting the cherry on top. So if you can, try and leave just a little bit of time at the end to check your answers because I guarantee you, you'll pick up some extra marks. So there you have it, five quick, but very, very important and very useful tips that you can put to use in your exams so that you can take all of that hard study that you've done and really get the most out of your exam and get the best grade possible. Hope you've enjoyed this video today. If you've got any in exam tips that uh, our subscribers and readers would find useful, then please share them in the comments below and get in touch. We'd love to hear how you go about studying and what works for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and it would be awesome if you haven't already, if you subscribe to our channel. And thanks so much for joining me today. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.